hello friends welcome to today's operating system class and in this class we will see the operating system operations so under this topic we are going to see the computer system organization common functions of interrupt interrupt handling interrupt timeline io structure and dma structure so these are the topic will come under the operations of operating system first it is important to understand the computer system organization to learn the operations of operating system here this is the very simple diagram for computer system organization here the devices will be connected to the system bus okay which devices are connected here the cpu cpu may be one or more cpu devices and disk controller the disk controller is used to, to connect the external disk with the computer and the usb controller usb controller are used to, to connect the io devices normally io devices that is mouse keyboard printer etc and all those devices will be connected to the computer by using the usb controller after that graphics adapter which is used to, to connect the monitor to the computer system and all these cpu disk controller cpu controller and graphics adapter will be connected to the common memory to the common memory through this system bus common system bus okay this is the structure of computer system see one or more cpu and device controllers connected through common bus providing access to shared memory this memory is shared by all these devices hence this is called the shared memory that is main memory main memory okay here concurrent execution of cpus and device computing for memory cycle okay everything will be executed simultaneously by accessing the common memory computer system operations okay here the io device io devices and cpu can execute concurrently here so this is our cpu and io devices are here okay so this one so the io devices and cpu execute concurrently but the speed of cpu is very high when compared to the io devices okay high speed the speed of cpu is very high when compared to io devices but somehow this can manage and can execute concurrently and each device controller is in charge of particular device type here the disk controller is in charge of the disk either it may be the internal hard disk or external disk and this usb controller is in charge of the corresponding device which is connected to the system okay either it may be a printer driver or a cpu or oh sorry keyboard mouse or any usb driver okay so the usb driver is con used to, to control the corresponding device which is connected to the computer okay here each device controller has its own local buffer okay so every device controller is having its own local buffer and this is nothing but cache memory local cache memory so local cache memory is attached to all the drives all the drives cache memory and this is another cache memory okay and the device controller type has an operating system device driver to manage it okay and cpu moves data to and from main memory to and from local buffers right so cpu is going to execute the process for that it will access the data that is from the memory to the memory to the memory as well as the data will be transferred to all the local buses to and from all the local buffers okay that is local cache memory which is connected to the corresponding device driver and the io is from the device to local buffer of controller and the device controller informs cpu that it has 
finished its operation by causing an interrupt ok. So, if this particular device driver wants to execute the process into the CPU then immediately it will send a interrupt signal interrupt signal to the CPU and the corresponding process will be executed ok. So, these are the uh, computer system operations. And next let us see the common functions of interrupt ok here interrupt which transfer control to the interrupt service routine generally to the interrupt service routine through the interrupt vector ok. So, what is the purpose of interrupt? Interrupt is used to, to execute the process in the CPU through the in interrupt only we can execute the process in the CPU ok and the interrupt transfer control to the interrupt service routine the interrupt service routine through the interrupt vector. What is interrupt vector which contains the address of all service routines the address of all service routines service routines is nothing but a list of process that is to be executed ok and the interrupt architecture that should save the address of interrupted instructions ok. So, this is very important. So, the interrupt architecture should save the address of interrupted instructions right and here a trap or exception is a software generated interrupt caused either by an error error if the process is executed and if there is error in the process or user request then the trap or exceptions will be executed. Here the operating system is interrupt driven system ok. See here this is our CPU and this is our device driver that is IO device driver. So, the CPU is currently executing some process ok and now the device driver wanted to execute its own process hence it will generate the interrupt signal interrupt signal then the CPU will request the IO and data to this device driver and finally after executing this particular process the process will get executed this is process this is IO request ok process will get executed and after completing the process it may be either success or failed ok the process will be either succeeded or failed ok then the program will be terminated. Once the program will be terminated then again the CPU should execute the previous process is not it ok it should continue the previous one for that we have to save the address of interrupted instruction this is important right. Next let us see the handling of uh, interrupt here the operating system preserves the state of CPU by storing registers and program counter ok. What state the CPU is currently that will be stored in the registers and program counters. So, this is the duty of operating system right and the operating system will also determine which type of interrupt has occurred ok. So, which type of interrupt currently the CPU can accept ok. The interrupt may be polling, priority handling, vector interrupt system and all these interrupt system will be discussed in forthcoming classes in detail ok. And a separate segment of code that is used to determine which action or what action should be taken for each type of interrupt ok. We are having different types of interrupt if any one of the interrupt occur then which action to be taken that will be determined only by the operating system. So, by using this separate segment of code 
a separate program is there to conclude which action to be taken for the corresponding interrupt okay this is called as interrupt handling and next let us see the interrupt timeline here we are having the timeline for cpu and the io devices okay so this is the cpu timeline and this is the io device timeline so in the cpu timeline the cpu will execute the user program if the if it is one state and if it is zero state it will execute the interrupt processing io interrupt processing okay so initially the cpu will execute the user program because it is one okay once it receives the interrupt signal that is if it is interrupted then it will come to io interrupt processing and execute the io interrupted processing for some time and then it will go back to the user program okay once it receives again this interrupt signal then the cpu will come to the io interrupt processing that will execute that process after that it will go back to the user program when come to io devices if it is this timeline is one then the io device is idle okay when it comes to zero then it start transferring data to cpu okay initially it will be zero once io request receives from the cpu then it turns to transferring data to the cpu so it will take some time to transfer all the data once the transfer done then the uh, timeline will go back to the idle mode so next uh, again if io request receives then it turns to the transferring mode okay turns to zero and this is one so once the transfer done then it go back to the idle mode okay here the cpu time is very high and io device is very slow when compared to cpu okay so hence once it rec uh, receives the io request from cpu it will take some time but the cpu if it interrupt immediately it will change the uh, cpu program to interrupt processing process so the cpu is very speed very high speed when compared to io devices the next one is io structure here we are having two different uh, uh, structures there first one is after io start control return to user program only upon io completion so here this is the cpu cycle and if the io device start transferring data up to this the use cpu cycle will be in the user program state okay for this the cpu will use this wait instruction so the purpose of wait instruction is to idle the cpu until the next interrupt okay until it requires the it receives the next interrupt cpu will be in the idle state or in the user program state once it receives the interrupt then it will change to io interrupt processing state okay interrupt processing state right and second one is after io start the control returns to user program without waiting for io completion okay so once uh, it receives this interrupt that is io starts immediately the control returns to user program the control returns to user program without waiting for io completion okay for that here we are using the system call which request to os to allow the user to wait for io completion okay so we can use this system call to request to the operating system to allow the user to wait for io completion okay so without wait without completing this io the cpu cannot execute the user program and second one the device status table okay so it contains the entry for each io device which indicating the type address and state of that particular device 
ok everything will be stored in device status table and this OS that is operating system indexes into the device IO device table IO device table which contains type address and state of all the IO devices is not it to determine the device status and to modify the table entry to include the interrupt. So, in that table we can include the interrupt signal ok. The next one is the structure of direct memory access which is otherwise called as DMA ok and already we have seen that is the speed of IO devices, IO device is very much slow when compared to CPU, but the speed of CPU and memory are almost equal ok. So, for high speed the use of high speed IO devices able to transmit information at close to memory speed at close to memory speed for that we have to use this direct memory access right ok. Here the device controller transfers block of data the device controller will transfer blocks of data from buffer storage from buffer storage. So, we have already seen all the device driver is having its own buffer otherwise called as catch memory ok. So, the buffer will take the block of data directly to the main memory without CPU intervention. So, these are the devices, these are the devices, device memory and the instruction data. this is the main memory, this is the main memory. So, from device to main memory the data will be transferred without interrupting this CPU for that we can use this direct memory access ok. Only one interrupt is generated per block. So, the data will be transferred block by block not bit by bit ok. So, for every block only one interrupt will be generated rather than one interrupt per byte ok. Up to this we have seen the computer system organization common functions of interrupt, interrupt handling, interrupt timeline, IO structure and DMA structure. So, these are the operations of operating system that will come under first unit and in next class we will see another important topic from first unit. Thank you.